Hello guys, in this video we're going to continue the Neander 6 principal meridian. The first one from the small intestine meridian. It's the blood meridian of foot tai yang. The foot tai yang meridian is quite long and then from the name you can see it's from it's towards traveled to the foot. And it's Tai Yang Meridian. The meridian originates at the inner canthus. From the inner canthus, we actually mentioned quite a few times that some of the, of the meridian meet here, such as the stomach meridian from the nostril and travel back to the bridge of the nose, and also the inner canthus where they where the stomach meridian meets the blood meridian. That's where the blood meridian start, starts. So it's from here, it goes all the way up. It ascends to the forehead and spreads over the crown of the head and the upper ear. It merges from the vertex, enters the inner brain. So it goes to the top of your head, and then from the top of your head, Goes in the brain, forming branches at the nape of the neck. It's one branch extends 1.5 trim parallel to the vertebral column. So that's the vertebral column, 1.5 trim parallel. And linked to the kidney, connect with the blood. This branch descends further through the gluteal region, ending in the popliteal, popliteal fossa. So it goes all the way down and end. This this line, the line. Media line goes all the way down and ends here. So that's where it ends. There's another branch. The second branch also descends from the from the neck along the media from the, the medial side of the scapula. So here is the scapula, the medial side of the scapula, and also go to the gluteal region, you turn away from the vertebral column. As a level to the vertebral column, it continues descending past the lumbar region, meets the first branch in the popliteal fossa. So it also goes down and meets here. From here, these two branches meet together at the popliteal fossa. And then it continues to travel down to the leg. Keep going down to the leg and travel along at the back side of the outer maglialus and finishing on the lateral side of the tip of the small toes. It's all the way here. And then the, the, the flow here, the pathway here, also the red and white, the junction of the where the, where the red and white meet. And it ends at the small toe. Blood meridian links to the kidney meridian of foot sao yin. The next is the kidney meridian. The kidney meridian, the blood meridian is from the small toe. The kidney meridian begins from the underneath of the small toe. That's where the blood meridian ends. It travels along the sole of the foot to the media magnalus. So it travels from 
the small toe go to the medial side and meets the medial manualis. We enter the heel, so we also can enter the heel. So if someone got a heel, that's why someone got a heel, for instance, someone got in heel pain in Chinese medicine or in acupuncture theories, we think that's due to the kidney problem, either kidney de deficiency or heat. Because, because this meridian enters the heel, then it ascends along the back of the medial side of the leg to the medial side of the of the also so it goes all the way up for the medial side and then up to the abdomen the region and when it goes to the abdomen it links to the kidney and connect with the bladder is re, um, re emerging from the kidney and it ascends straight outwards through the liver and diaphragm into the lung where it divides into two so from here it goes to the lung with the one branch ascends along the throat and terminates at the root of the tongue with another meridian and at the root of the tongue which meridian you still remember and the second branch enter the heart travels into the chest so internally it enter the heart to the chest and link to the pericardial meridian so this is the kidney meridian kidney meridian is in meridian also travel from the foot to the abdomen and chest. Pericardial meridian. Pericardial meridian originates in the chest where it connects with the pericardium. So it starts from the chest, pericardium, and link with the upper, middle, and lower jaw. Which means you link to three jaw, all three upper, middle, and lower jaw. Branch arising from the chest travels inside the chest cavity, emerge from the costal region and ascends to the abdomen. Uh, so this one branch from here go to the surface. It travels along the medial side of the upper arm, terminates at the tip of the middle finger. So child travels in the medial side of the upper arm and terminates ends at the tip of the middle finger. The one branch runs along the outer side of the ring finger tip. So there's another branch go to the ring finger. That's from the ring finger that's where the sun jump meridian or pericardial meridian with the pericardial meridian meets the sun jump meridian sun jump meridian start from the outer side of the tip of the ring finger that's where the Pericardial meridian ends, travels all the way up the forearm between radius and ulna. So it goes all the way up to the shoulder. It travels to the front part of the super clavicular fossa and from the superclavicular fossa divide into two branches the first branch travels to the pericardium 
So you travel to the pericardium directly and descend through the diaphragm, link with the upper, middle, and lower jaw, meets the three jaw. The second branch ascends to the supraclavicular fossa, it travels along the surface of the neck, passing the back side of the ear to the corner of the anterior, or anterior hairline. So there's another pathway that travels from the neck to the back of the ear and the anterior of the hairline, and down to the cheek, and terminates in the in the infer orbital region. So you go down and terminate here. The sub branch from the second branch of the second branch originates behind the ear. So there's another branch actually. There's another branch from behind the ear. It enters the ear, it enters directly there and it emerges in front of the ear. So from the back of the ear, it enters the ear. So we just want to change the color. From here, it enters the ear and then it emerges from from the in front of the ear, emerge from here, spread over the cheek and the outer canvas, link with the gallbladder meridian. At the outer canvas, the gallbladder meridian. The gallbladder meridian also quite long. Hooked meridian and Sao Yang. This the meridian begins at the outer canvas, then it ascends to the corner of the forehead and curves downwards to the region behind the ear, turns towards the again to the GB14 above the eyebrow, and goes back to the GB20 and down to GB14. So from the description, Quite complicated because this meridian actually is complicated. So this meridian is one branch from the outer canvas. It curves down to the front of the ear and then up to the hairline. Back to the ear. And it curves like this to GB14. Here, this spot is GB14. And from GB14, it goes backwards to GB20 at the back of the head. And from GB20, it meets with GB14. So you don't need to write about these points. These points begin to learn in the, acupuncture, the location of acupuncture. You just need to have a general idea where the flow goes to. And then there's another branch enter the superclavicular fossa from here again divided into two branches. So there's another branch Then to the neck, there's another branch. Then from the neck, and then to the super clavicular region into the chest. So it goes to the chest, pass through the diaphragm that, that's inside, that pass through the diaphragm, can never deliver into the gallbladder. Continue down through the Glory to the groin, to the surface area of the hip, upper region, enter the hip joint. So that's the flow from internally. They travel through the chest, pass through the diaphragm, connect with the liver, 
and the gallbladder here and keep continue downwards to the groin and go to the surface of the pubic region and at the hip of and at the hip joint. So that's one branch internally. The other branch runs down runs downwards from the supraclavicular fossa and pass in front of abdida spread over the lateral side of the chest and edema. So lateral side of the chest and edema. So for instance for the gallbladder meridian it's quite complicated and you see the the pathway is not straight line. So from this kind of meridian in basic theories what you need to remember is at least is the general distribution. For instance, the gallbladder meridian travels on the lateral side of the body. This is something you need to remember. So you don't need to focus on where these points, where they turn. But at least you need to remember that the gallbladder meridian travels on the lateral side. At the hip joint, it meets the first branch. So from here, this joint, this point, it meets the first branch, and then the second branch they meet together, and then they travel down all the way down to the dorsal of the foot and end at the big toes, and end at the tip of the fourth toes. There's another branch go to the big toes. And the, the one go to the big toes link to the liver meridian. The liver meridian is the foot meridian. So foot in meridian, where is foot in meridian travels? The direction. So the foot in meridian travels from the foot to the chest, to the abdomen and chest. So this is the meridian. The liver meridian starts from the hairy, hairy, hairy region of the big toes. That's where the gallbladder meridian ends. It passes along the inside of the foot and the front of the media medialis and then ascends along the front medial side of the leg. They go to the medialis and goes all the way up. We travel to the up to the abdomen go to this region. So this region is the external external genitalia region. External genitalia region here. It, that's why sometimes we use liver meridian or liver. Someone suffer from external genitalia problem such as men's problem, ladies problem menstruation problem or even infertilities, we sometimes use the treatment towards the liver because the liver meridian goes to here and it travels around it curves around the external genitalia into the lower abdomen so the meridian when you travel to the lower atom to here it curves around here and then we enter the low abdomen. It runs outwards and curve around the stomach and to the liver, connect with the gallbladder. The lung travels outwards and pass through the diaphragm, branch out into the costal and hypochondriac region. So there's one branch that would come here and go to the chest. That's also why sometimes if someone suffers from the hypochondriac region problem, discomfort or chest discomfort, we also use the treatment towards the liver meridian because the liver meridian distributes to this area. We ascend along the posterior aspects to the throat, to the nasal pharynx and connect with the eye system. 
with with one branch goes up to the eye. And it goes up to miss your meridian at the top of the head. A branch from the eye system descends into the cheek and curves around the inner surface of the lip. But another branch from the eye descends and then curves around the lips. But another one branch from the liver passes through the diaphragm and then enters the lung to link with the lung meridian of hand tie. So there's another meridian, another branch from the liver pass, pass through the diaphragm and enter the lung, link with the lung meridian. So until here, we have introduced the general distribution or the pathway of the twelve principal meridian. As you can see, the liver meridian of foot jueying is the last meridian we mentioned here and then where it ends. The liver meridian ends. It enters the lung enters the lung to link with the lung meridian of the hand tie in. So you can see the last meridian it starts from the foot goes all the way up and then that one branch enters to the lung connect to the lung meridian. When you go back to the lung meridian you will see that the description here is actually where the lung meridian starts. So when you have studied all this general distribution of each meridian, what's the flow, how they travel to different areas, you will see that these meridians, these meridians actually are connected one by one into a big circle. Okay, so today we will stop here and then from the next video we're going to introduce the extra meridians.